we're here at the uh, Fotokina 2016 with Bertram Hollinger from Zeiss, the, from customer care at Zeiss. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of your lenses, your lens lines, and your new products here for Fotokina. So uh, first, let's start with maybe the different lines that you have. You actually have now a lot of different lines. So maybe you can tell us a bit about the differences between all of them. Some people sometimes get a bit confused. Mm -hmm. Sure, yes, since last uh, Photokina something has changed of course. Uh, in former times we uh, separated our lenses just uh, regarding the mounts. We had different mounts, especially with the SLR cameras and for the mirrorless cameras. And a few years ago in 2012 uh, we started to introduce uh, family names for our lenses to uh, better separate them. And each family has uh, uh, same kinds of mounts and um, same kinds of um, applications sometimes. And we offer different focal lengths in each uh, lens family. So let's start with our top class uh, lenses. We already introduced in 2013, these are the Otus lenses. Um, Otus lenses, the outer appearance directly shows um, a similarity to our top line um, um, cine style lenses, our uh, master prime top class uh, lenses used for Hollywood, uh, in the Hollywood um, cinematography industry. Um, these are the best uh, SLR lenses. Uh, we say the best uh, uh, SLR lenses in the world. We, 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 try, we try them in the in You tried it out? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so uh, the main goal with them was to offer high speed lenses. All of them have uh, a speed of f1.4. Um, and they offer uh, nearly perfect um, uh, image quality, even wide open. That's the big difference to all other lenses, high-speed lenses that are on the market. So you cannot really improve the image quality by, by stopping them down. Uh, it's nearly perfect at f1.4. We have three focal lengths in the Otus lens line available, a 28 millimeter, a 55 standard lens, and a short telephoto, 85 perfect for portraits. So here in Anofoto Kina booth you can also find uh, extremely large prints made with this uh, Otus lenses, uh, two meter wide uh, uh, prints where you can see every detail and the resolution such uh, lenses offer on uh, high performing um, cameras today. So the second lens line we have, our standard lens line, where we introduced three new lenses, this Photokina, is our Milvus lens family. Uh, now with the three new lenses, it contains of uh, nine different focal lengths, ranging from 15 millimeter up to 135. Um, this is the new, we would say, standard class lens line for SLR cameras. Both of them, Milvus as well as Otus lenses, uh, come in two different mounts. Here it's uh, the set after 2 mount for uh, Nikon or the set E mount for Canon. The Milvus line um, is uh, partly, we use the same optical designs like in the older classic type lenses in our SLR line. Partly we have completely new lenses like the 18 mm f2.8. This is a completely new developed lens we introduced now uh, last week and it's a brand new lens for the Photokina here. Um, common um, things for the Milbus line, they are weatherproof, they are uh, sealed against dust and spray water. Um, they have a special declick function of the aperture ring. This is valid for the um, Nikon type, for the ZF2 type lenses only. You can de-click here the aperture ring, so you can use it perfectly for video applications too with the follow focus. This is a nice tool. We have a, a new design, especially the 15 millimeter um, has a, deta a detachable um, lens shade now. It's also the widest lens on the market that still has a filter thread mount, so you can use standard filters or holders for slot in filters for landscape photography, for instance. Um, our goal with the Milvus line uh, is, of course, we will expand the Milvus line in future. We started last year with six lenses, now we have nine, uh, is to equal the quality between all the focal lengths. So in former times, we had in our classic lens lines, we had older optical designs that were approved for many decades, but were not that perfect anymore for new requirements for large prints or for high resolution cameras. 
And we had a new optical designs like the 135, which was developed only three or four years ago. And with the Milvus line, we, we like to equal those uh, image quality between the different focal lengths. So that are also not only for photographers, but also for videographers ideally suited, which uh, require a constant appearance and a constant quality above uh, all the lenses. Externally, they are also fairly similar to the to the Otus. I mean, it's the same rubber uh, grip, I think, on the focus ring and the uh, very smooth uh, shape of the lens itself. So they, they have some similarities in appearance as well. This is our new op uh, design, auto design. We'd like to uh, uh, separate from other manufacturers with those uh, special uh, shape from the outside with a completely integrated uh, lens shade in the shape with no um, um, with smooth surfaces but yeah. it's still uh, a very creepy rubbering it's uh, it's it's not uh, engraved or something like this it's a, a straight rubbering but it's it's a very special rubber so you can oh, it's, it, it gives you a lot of creep even if you if it's cold or if you have uh, yeah, an, 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 yes right um, the third lens line we still have in our current SLR lenses is the classic type lenses. We have for many years now in our product lines uh, and lenses like the um, classic Planar 1.485. We have still six classic type lenses on the market, also both available in Nikon or Canon mount. So these are the lenses for SLR cameras. Um, let's turn over now to our lenses for mirrorless cameras. We have uh, in total four different lens families. Let's start with our <coughs> latest uh, family. It's the Batis lens line we introduced in 2015. It uh, now contains of uh, three different focal lengths. The shortest one is the 18 millimeter, the next one the 25, and the uh, highest one is the 85, f1.8. Um, the Batis lenses, they fit, they are equipped with a Sony E-mount and are of all for the full frame cameras. So you can use it on all of the Alpha 7 series cameras. Um, they come with autofocus and the special thing is the, optic, uh, the, the OLED display which gives you um, the focusing distance and the depth of field. These are the only lenses on the market, or the first lenses on the market, I have to say. So other manufacturers also um, uh, take this, this over. Idea. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, 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 it's very nice, especially when you work manually with manual focusing. Of course, you can switch off the autofocus, like with every lens, and can do a very precise focusing according um, to the display. I see that uh, there is no autofocus uh, switch, or manual and autofocus switch on, on the lens itself. You need right. to do it from the camera. Yes. What, why have... did you decide to do this like that? Uh, it makes no sense because all the features are already in the camera's menu. So in the function setting menus of the Alpha 7 cameras, you have all the settings mm -hmm. with direct manual focus, manual focus, uh, a, a continuous autofocus or standard autofocus. And it, it makes no sense to do a switch here on the camera. Uh, the lens again. It draws the power to the screen and everything from the camera itself, yes, right? Yes, right, right. It doesn't take a lot of No, power. no, no. So uh, we checked that it's much less than 1% of okay. the whole uh, battery power the camera uh, uses normally. Okay. So of, of course you can also switch it off oh, if you don't okay. like it. Uh, of course, on the extreme bright sunlight, it could be hard to read. Like yeah. every display, you can uh, easily switch it off. Okay. In the standard settings, it's normally only on in a manual focus mode. In autofocus, it's uh, typically off, but you can also uh, turn it on if you like. Okay. Weather sealed lens is relatively compact and lightweight. Um, our goal for all of the, our mirrorless um, lens families, for mirrorless cameras, is to make them relatively small and compact. Uh, we think it makes not that much of a sense to make extremely huge and big, of course, also powerful lenses for a mirrorless camera like a Sony Alpha 7. Um, the, ba the balance would be The good. balance would be not good. 
and all the advantages of the mirrorless systems would be gone then. So we typically reduce the lens speed a little bit. So the highest aperture here is uh, 2.8, which is still very good for a super wide angle. Um, or the 85 millimeter is f1.8, a little bit slower than our uh, Otus or Milvus or classic lenses in this focal length range. Yeah, but in, with the new sensors, I don't think that it's such a big problem. I mean, right. Especially in full frame. Right, with the higher ISO settings with the modern cameras, it should be no problem at all. And uh, the goal, of course, of a photographer who switches from uh, DSLR cameras to a mirrorless one is normally to reduce weight and, uh, and size in his, in his camera bag. Um, the second line we have in our mirrorless is the Luxia lens family. Um, these are very, very compact lenses. Now it contains of uh, four different focal lengths. We introduced the 85 millimeter here. Unfortunately, it's not available here on the table. So all uh, the customers out there have, their, have them in, in their hands now. Uh, four focal lengths, a 21 millimeter, a 35, a 50, and a new 85 millimeter. And here our goal was to provide a full manual lens, completely made out of metal, like our SLR lenses. Complete manual focus control, manual aperture control, also coming with the D-click function we already saw with the Milbus lenses. They are here uh, sealed. They are not completely weather sealed like the Bartis lenses, but uh, the contacts to the bayonet mount are sealed with the rubber ring. Uh, and um, without the electronical aperture control and without autofocus, it's possible to make them very, very compact. It's the same diameter like the E-mount, and all the Luxia lenses come with the same filter thread mount. So it's 52 millimeter. So uh, regardless of the focal lengths, all of them have the same size. And uh, it could make, you can make a very, very small photo or camera equipment when you choose uh, several focal lengths of the Loxias together with your Sony E-mount camera. Loxia lenses, like the Bartis lenses, are also only available in full-frame Sony E-mount. And they're basically manual, unlike the Bartis. Yes, that's the big difference to the Bartis. Bartis uh, autofocus, here complete manual lenses. So especially ideally suited for creative photographers who like to have the hard stops of the focusing ring. We have long focusing throws of the focusing ring for very precise focusing and manual aperture uh, presetting only. And uh, the la last line we have in our lens lines for mirrorless cameras is the Tweed line. We have uh, three focal lengths of the Tweed lenses. Tweed lenses are compact lenses available in two different mounts here with Fuji X mount for the Fuji X cameras and also the same lenses available in Sony E mount. Big difference to Bartis and Loxia, they are for APS-C size cameras only. They are not full frame lenses, therefore we have uh, different focal lengths the widest, for instance, is the 12 millimeter, like this, to a 12 millimeter. The, still, the widest uh, fixed focal length for APS-C size cameras for Fuji or Sony. They also come with autofocus control. Um, here, with Fuji, like with the original Fuji lenses, they have an aperture ring for uh, manual aperture presets. With a uh, Sony, that's not possible. Sony, the aperture control is only from the camera, like with all uh, autofocus E-mount lenses. And of course, <coughs> for uh, the last lens family we have, we already have since uh, around 12, 13 years on the market, are the ZM type lenses with um, Leica M mount, with a manual Leica M mount for rangefinder cameras from Leica, Focklander, or our former Zeiss Econ camera body. And um, this was the latest one we introduced last Photokina. Um, that is the GON 1.435, a very, very high performing lens. And of course, like all M mount lenses, they allow to make very, very compact, high quality lenses, completely made out of metal, very heavy lenses, um, but still a very, very compact system. 
and uh, some of course use them also to adapt them to other mirrorless cameras. This could be an option sometimes, but with a super wide angle lenses, with M mount lenses, uh, it's not always recommendable because the requirements of the of the uh, mirrorless digital cameras are sometimes a little bit different to those of the M mount cameras. Okay. So you gave us a very thorough, I think, uh, look at the different lines that you have. I think that you mentioned some of the new lenses, but maybe you can just mention them again. What are the, I think, four new lenses that you announced for Photokina? Right, we, had, uh, f we have now four new lenses. We have three new Milvus lenses. The widest one is the 15 millimeter we now introduced here with the detachable lens shade, with all the um, mm -hmm. uh, advantages of the Milbus lens line, of course, compared to the older classic type lens of this focal length. A brand new lens in the, the second one is the 18 millimeter, 2.1 18, a relatively compact but extremely high performing SLR lens here in the Milbus line. And the third one is the 135. Um, and then I already talked about it, the fourth lens in our lens line for new lenses is the Loxia 85mm, unfortunately not available <laughs> here at the moment. Uh, we also have um, a cine lens, a cine, the lightweight zoom dot three, a very, very compact uh, zoom lens for Super 35 uh, cinematography. It's a 21 to 100mm uh, cine zoom lens. Mm. In, in terms of availability of these lenses? You know? Yes, um, the three new Milvus lenses will be available from mid of October. Mm. Um, the new Loxia lens will be coming out in uh, December this year and the lightweight zoom in January. Okay. Uh, final question, not related to specifically any of these lenses. You know, since we last talked, I think uh, it was about 2012 here in mm -hmm. Fulukina, uh, and uh, I think a lot of things have changed in the industry, and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, the industry basically shrank by, I think, uh, 40%. This, these, uh, for some, some of the estimates of SIPA, I think. Mm -hmm. How is this affecting size, which is very special, I think, niche in the market, mm -hmm. professional maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, we have kind of niche products with our manual focus lenses, especially for the SLR lenses. Uh, we separate uh, from, from the other manufacturers of interchangeable lenses. Um, of course, um, we also see um, reducing this, the sales of the SLR cameras and systems, but uh, we are not affected that much than other manufacturers in our niche segment with our high quality lenses. It's going down, of course, the request for DSLR cameras, but there's a huge increase, uh, especially with the mirrorless systems in the last years. Um, so especially with the full frame mirrorless Sony, and uh, our answer is the Bartis and the Loxia lenses. We expand, we, we do a lot of work to bring out new lenses in those lines with the E-mount. Uh, and we can compensate this uh, very, very good, the decreases in the SLR market with the increases in the mirrorless market, right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.